Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this um, webinar, Fast Automated Publishing for Scientific and Scholarly Content. My name is Emily Johnston, and I am Director of Business Development for Typeify. Um, also presenting today is Jamie Brinkman, who is one of our Senior Solutions Consultants. Um, Jamie is, has been working for the last many years with our STM customers, um, helping them design solutions uh, for their automation requirements. So I wanted to start just by giving a little bit of background uh, about Typeify. Um, Typeify was founded in 2001 and is headquartered in Queensland, Australia. Um, we have offices today in the US, the UK, the Netherlands, and Sri Lanka as well, and we're supporting thousands of users in about 35 countries worldwide. Typeify's customers include SDM publishers, of course, like New England Journal of Medicine, the US Geological Survey, and the World Health Organization, just to mention a few. But as you can also see here, in addition to STM publishers, Typeify works with many different types of content publishers, from education publishers to standards bodies to manufacturers. And this variety has given us experience in developing cutting edge solutions for numerous and varying challenges that different types of content publishers face, making Typeify a leader in content automation solutions. So how does Typeify work? Well, Typeify is a single source publishing platform that allows our customers to take their content, input it into Typeify, and output more than 30 different formats for print, online, or mobile distribution. Once this is all set up, all of that can be done in a matter of seconds to minutes with just a click of a button. If we look at how this works in more detail, uh, looking at this graphic on the screen, Typeify is designed to work with the various ways that content may be authored. For example, content can be authored in Microsoft Word or in XML, um, like JATS or BITS, which of course are, are common standards for scholarly or scientific content. Could also be authored in HTML or EPUB or some other format. Regardless of that source format, the first step of the process is for that content to be input into Typeify and automatically transformed into an XML format that we call CXML or Content XML. CXML is based on the DocBook DTD and full documentation can be found on our website. But this CXML format is highly versatile and optimized for automation through the Typeify software and particularly for automation through Adobe InDesign Server which is used for the creation of, the PDF, of a PDF output. As mentioned before, there are many output formats from HTML to various types of XML, EPUB, Mobi, DAISY, or other digital formats, as well as PDFs that could be used for print, for web, with um, TOC linking, um, hyperlinks, all of that, um, or accessible formats like PDF or other accessible um, other accessible formats that utilize things like alternative text, alt text um, for images or tables. And those can all be um, automated through the use of, use of Typeify. This gives customers versatility to set up solutions specific to their workflow needs and to produce multiple output formats or designs from the same single source. So customers get content out faster, and in more formats, all without compromising on design. I did just wanted to mention as well that Typeify has an open API, which allows for integration with process management or content management systems if you're using that type of, of, of application. So let's look at how the use of Typeify has created benefits for some of our customers. FAST, the Federation of Animal Science Societies, um, was able to decrease the amount of time, cut the amount of time it took to produce their journals in half using Typeify. The challenge that they had when we started working with them is that they were using an old, um, old system for composition, Miles 33, and they had staff retiring. They were trying to figure out how to, um, or, or what kind of program to use that would be more versatile moving forward. They decided that they wanted to use 
um, InDesign as their composition tool since InDesign is the most widely used um, desktop publishing application worldwide. Um, and Typeify, of course, automation sits on top of uh, Adobe InDesign for the automation of PDFs. So using um, X-Styles to create XML and Typeify for the automation of um, the layout, they were able to reduce that time um, to produce their journals. IGI Global uh, was able to roughly triple the number of books and journals that they produce in a matter of a few years without the need to add additional staff. The challenge that they had when we started working with them was that they were trying to figure out how to cook, cut costs, of course, and how to be more competitive in their markets. And they either needed, they were considering either outsourcing or looking at some way of trying to improve their processes internally. So working with Typeify, they were able to, um, we were able to develop an automation solution that allowed them to, again, triple the number of books and journals that they were producing. And they were able to do that without the need to add additional resources in-house. Publishers like the International Monetary Fund have used Typeify to reduce the amount of time it, it took them to produce their publications by about 80%, reducing that time from, day, from weeks to days. The challenge that the International Monetary Fund has is that their content, especially their fiscal reports, are constantly changing. Information about um, for tables or for graphs that have to do with financial um, changes and stuff in different regions is constantly being updated. And so every time they had to um, typeset or have a, a publication typeset, it would take quite a bit of time. Um, using Typeify, they were able to drop in that new content in a matter of minutes, output a new new format or a new output so that they could um, very quickly get their content out uh, to their users and ha have confidence that it was accurate and up to date when they did so. Right. Customers like Pioneer and the World Health Organization are using Typeify to um, automate the release of their publications in multiple languages. So Typeify supports um, up to 80 different languages, including Latin, Cyrillic, and uh, languages that are set right to left. Um, so at pretty much any language that's supported in Adobe InDesign can be um, automated through Typeify. So if you are a publisher that has content in multiple languages, um, automation of those languages is definitely something that Typeify can handle. So now let's move on to a demonstration of how the Typeify software works. Our focus today is on scientific or scholarly publishing, of course. So we're going to show a demo of an STM journal workflow. This is based on content authored in JATS XML, which will be input into Typeify. And as a side note, a workflow for an STM book, um, something that may have been authored in, in bits or in Word, um, would be very similar. It, the difference, of course, is the input format. Um, in that case, it would be Word or bits instead of JATS. Um, but the method of setting up workflows and templates would be the same. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Jamie, for the demonstration. Thanks, Emily. Hi, this is Jamie Brinkman. I'm a senior solutions consultant at Typeify, and I'm here today to show you how you can take XML content and run it through Typeify to get different designs. Um, and these specifically will be for journals in this instance. First of all, I'm going to start a few jobs running so that we can have those going. So I'll just here. And then run that one. And then I have one more that I'd like to run. There we go. So I've got all those running now. So now let's, let me tell you what we're looking at here while those get started. So what we're looking at is the web interface for Typeify Server. 
Typeify can be integrated with a content management system if you're using one, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but if you're not, then you can use our web interface to manage things. And you can see it's just got kind of a basic file structure. The, the names for these folders, they can be whatever you want them to be. It's completely customizable. And you can control you know, what it's named. You can have folders nested in folders, all of that good stuff. Meanwhile, we have also in this folder called workflow, we have what we call typeify workflows. And a typeify workflow is what allows you to take that content that you've you know, put up in the, the file store and have it interact with typeify to create your different outputs. So in this case, this workflow, it's a series of steps and it starts out with the JATS XML file and then it transforms that into what we call CXML, which is a special brand of XML that can, has all of your paragraph style names and things like that for InDesign. Um, and then it also brings in your fonts. And then the next step takes that CXML file and actually runs it through InDesign. And in this case, it's running it through a one column InDesign template and then lays out a PDF. But you'll also note that I also ran another workflow just a second ago, and that was this one. And this workflow takes the exact same XML file and runs it through a different InDesign template. And so it's going to give us a two column layout. And so we'll be able to take that same XML file and get two different designs out of it. And you could also, if you wanted, depending on how you like structuring your, your workflows and how, you know, what kind of things makes sense for you in your overall workflow is that you could you could have one workflow that actually takes your xml file and runs it through first the two column you know and then also we could have it run through the one column as well and it could all be in the same workflow so that you could just you know click run the one time and have it run that file through and you could have it also do additional types of, of outputs, other designs, um, other types of outputs if you wanted. And it could all be in one workflow or you could have multiple workflows, just however you wanted to set that up and whatever made more sense to you and for how you work. So while we've been talking, the first file has finished. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. So you can see, um, you can see actually right here, we have um, a PDF and an InDesign file. And so I'll open the PDF. And so here we go. We have um, just, this is a one column journal. And it's got, it's got some math in it, some graphics. It's pretty, pretty straightforward, I think. And so that, that is the, the one column layout. Now the two column is finished. So I'm going to open that one. So now you can see, see it's the, it's the same content, you know, the phenomenon of elastic, et cetera, but it has been run through a two column template. And so now you can see we've got a two column output. We still got the math and the, the graphics and all of that. And, and you can even see in the two column, we have some column balancing going on in the last page to bring this up so you don't have just like one long column and then like, you know, like one line of text or something up at the top over here because that wouldn't look good. So we have that taken care of automatically too. And so now I'm going to actually open up uh, the InDesign file that I just generated. Let me just download that. There we go. Right. And so this is the InDesign file that we just generated. And so this actually brings up an, a nice opportunity because I can show you one of the two different types of math workflows that you can use at Typeify. So when you're laying out your math, some people like to have a workflow that uses images and we can support that. We also have this workflow, which actually takes your MathML and then lays it out as live text in InDesign. So you can actually see these equations. When I put my mouse over them, you can actually see that I can actually go in there 
And I mean, I could actually, you know, delete something if I wanted. Although, of course, now I've just made that equation not make sense. But because um, um, this is live, this is live text in InDesign. And so basically, it's just taking that MathML and it's actually structuring this live text. And it's using a plugin called Movement Math Tools to do that, which is fully integrated into Typeify um, in this workflow. But we also have another math workflow, which this file just finished. So perfect timing because I can show you. This file actually uses our other math workflow, which as I mentioned before, that's if you do your math and you actually have equation graphics. You can use the equation graphics and we can also support that just as well. Um, this uh, file also, it's again, it's just a, it's a journal. It's a two column layout. We've also got some tables in here, some graphics, of course, and you can actually see how we've got some landscape graphics. And also some landscape tables. So you can see Typeify can handle you know, lots of different tables and different formats there, different or different design requirements there as well. That's pretty much everything that I was looking to show you today. You've just watched XML content be flowed through Typeify to produce multiple designs, including even the same XML file getting two different designs. So thank you so much. And Emily, I will turn it back over to you. All right, thank you, Jamie. Um, so one of the questions that I have is about placement of figures and tables. Um, how does Typeify determine how that placement occurs? All right, um, so we are looking at that same file that um, I just ran a little while ago, a few minutes ago. And um, so right in here, you can see the, you know, some of the figures that were placed. And the way that Typeify can um, handle the placement of the figures is that in your InDesign template that you'll have created, um, we have what we call um, layout rules. So Basically, you can create a series of rules that apply to these different elements um, and can control how the engine will lay them out. Um, so for instance, um, this particular image element um, has two rules set up for it, one of them aligning to the top of the, the text frame and one to the bottom. And if I click and open, you can see you can set up, um, you can control vertical and horizontal alignment, you can set limits, you can put all this information into the template. And so then when the job is running, it will automatically, as it comes to each element, it will go and it will um, use these rules in order to lay them out. And then it will also, if you have multiple elements on the same page, um, and it will, use the, the rules in, that you have set up to determine how those elements place related to each other as well. And it will do that for every page. And so then that's how it actually lays them out. Great, thank you. Um, another question, can Typeify handle complex tables that span multiple pages or spreads? And if so, how does that work? Yes. Um, so how that would work is that if um, you have tables that need to, you know, go across multiple pages, um, if you if those are just um, inline tables, then they can just flow just with the text and in design, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but if you need those tables to be floating, which you know that's if they have text wrap applied and um, you know sit on the layer above the content, similar to how some of those graphics that we just looked at were done, um, then Typeify can just um, have a, a script that runs that just automatically continues that you know from page to page. So and um, you can also have continued text set up so that's automatically placed, you know, saying continued on the next page or the next column or whatever it, it needs to be. All right, so what is the training and implementation like um, for setting up Typeify? So basically, we would um, 
in most instances, how it works out is that, um, you know, once we um, begin work on your project, we would build um, the first template for you. That's how we, how usually what we end up doing. And then we would um, do a training session and we would train you on all the ins and outs of that template and also how to create additional templates if you need additional templates. Um, and so the training usually adds up to um, several days, um, but we can split that out into smaller chunks. Um, but the goal is that when we're done, you would then have the skills necessary so that if you need to create additional templates, um, you would be able to do that. You would understand how the whole system works and you would be able to, to handle all that yourself. Thank you. We have a question about multiple articles. If if um, if they if someone was to have multiple articles that they then wanted to combine in a, into an issue, um, can Typeify handle that kind of combination and automate things like tables of contents and stuff like that? Yes, yes, we can. Um, if you needed to have multiple articles, then you could just have your workflow set up to have the multiple inputs. And then as far as how those are output, um, you could have them output into an InDesign book, which um, for if you're not familiar with how that works, then that's basically like um, sort of a, a containing um, structure and InDesign, a containing file, and then all of your articles would be in individual InDesign files that are linked together by that book, and then you could make a PDF out of them. Great. Next question, can Typeify automate the creation of accessible formats, and how does it handle things like alternative text? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yes, we can handle accessible formats. Um, so, and it really just kind of depends on what your requirements are. Um, cause we can do it in a lot of different ways. I mean, um, we could, if you wanted to take a PDF and actually make that pass, you know, different accessibility checkers, then that's one thing that we could do. But, you know, we can also support things like Daisy, for instance. Um, so we can support, you know, different formats specifically that are specifically in mind for accessibility. Um, and so how we would, but if you were, how we would do that is that we would just, um, if you wanted to make an accessible PDF, for instance, um, you would just need to, we would know that when we started the project and we would just make sure to design it with that in mind. And as far as alt text is concerned, um, so the way that's handled is the alt text is indicated in your XML. And so then that would get passed through um, and just we would have it set up to pass that through into InDesign and it would, um, then come into the PDF. I mean, so it'd be it'd be very simple as long as you have the appropriate tag in the XML. As a follow-up question to that, would uh, we recommend that, or is it a requirement that that alt text be available at the beginning, or could it be added at a later point? Yeah, it could be added later. Um, I mean, you know, I always recommend if you have it at the beginning that that's easier because you can kind of get all your setup done at the one time but if you don't have that available and that's something that comes up later then we can definitely we can definitely um do that so you could start off with just you know you could start off not making an accessible pdf and then down the road um decide that you wanted to and i mean there would just be some adjustments that we would need to make to get everything working but we could still do that and be perfectly fine great thank you there's a question about time savings and particularly um about the use of bits and uh, the automation of books and whether um, we have customers who've seen uh, similar types of time savings on that side. Of course, I had mentioned before that FAS uh, is a journal publisher and they were able to reduce uh, the time it took them to produce their content by half. Um, but we also have worked with customers like the American uh, Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons and they were able to um, using bits to produce their books, they were able to um, reduce the amount of time from about a year down to just a matter of months to produce some of their big publications. So we have seen time savings on that side um, as well. Absolutely. Um, I will thank you all for joining us today for this webinar um, and uh, let us know if you need anything. Otherwise, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much.